When most people think of the Chesapeake Bay, they think of vast open water, oysters, and crabs. And while those are all important parts of the bay, what many people don't realize is that the watershed itself spans over 64,000 square miles. From the headwater streams in New York to the open ocean in Virginia, the Chesapeake Bay watershed gives life to some of nature's most unique wildlife and is home to over 18 million people. At the Alliance, we believe it is our duty to protect our connection to nature, our recreational opportunities, our source of clean drinking water, and our home. Here at the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, our passionate team, collaborative nature, an action-oriented approach delivers on-the-ground solutions to achieve healthy lands and clean water. When we think about the pollution reductions that we need to make in the Chesapeake Bay watershed in order to restore our rivers and streams and the, the bay itself, we know that we have this large percentage that agriculture is contributing and a number in each state of nitrogen, sediment, and phosphorus that we need to reduce. When we think about agriculture, I think generally as a community, we're really just thinking about the farmer. And it's not just the farmer. It's the farmer, it's the co-ops, it's the grocery stores, and honestly, it's the consumer too. We're all a little piece in influencing how ag work is defined and how it's prioritized and how it's valued. So we are here at um, one of Maryland and Virginia Milk Producers member farms in Southern Lancaster County. He participated in the Turkey Hill Clean Water Partnership program and implemented several BMPs on the farm. Today behind me you can see some manure storages, the barnyard restoration, um, and he also implemented a riparian forest buffer along his stream here on the farm. By working with dairy co-ops and corporations, we have instant access to hundreds of farmers that are interested in conservation. The dairy co-op bring, you know, the alliance to the farm and we start this conversation rather immediately. So our um, efficiency is very, very good. We have right now a waiting list of over 100 farms that are interested in working with us. We need more resources, we need more capacity, increase our capacity to help all these farmers. It's, it's a great model that works well. Uh, we are interested in, in helping our dairy co-ops or corporations and accomplishing their goals as well. Here on this farm, uh, this is a great example of how our ag and our forest teams work together. Um, so for in order for this farmer to access all the funding and assistance for all the agricultural BMPs that are helping him clean up, reduce his erosion, uh, reduce his uh, manure and uh, uh, nutrient impacts, um, he signed up for our riparian forest buffer program. Um, once they sign up for our riparian forest buffer program, then they can access all that stuff that's probably higher on their to-do list but we're achieving the kind of uh, very needed practice of getting that riparian reforestation uh, installed as well. Uh, right now we're at Wakefield Valley Park, which was the former golf course, a country club here in Westminster, Maryland. In the spring of 2023, uh, we reforested 22 acres of fairways on this former golf course. We planted over 6,600 trees uh, and over 22 different species. When the city took ownership of Wakefield, of the old Wakefield Valley Golf Course, uh, our director of recreation and parks, Abby Gruber, reached out to the Maryland Forest Service, who then put her in touch with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay uh, to help with reforestation in this area. Uh, our partnership with the Alliance has just been great. They've been uh, really awesome at keeping us informed of what's going on. They have come to help support us at community meetings in the region, and it's just been a really phenomenal partnership. I I think it's really important to care for our local environments because you might think of it as being small and affecting just us, but really everything on earth is interconnected. And so when we care for our local environment here, it not only improves our living situation, but also improves the residents uh, downstream on the way to the Chesapeake Bay. It affects the Chesapeake Bay. 
and um, it really helps increase the biodiversity and the healthiness of the system. The kind of the mission of the Alliance's forestry program uh, is threefold. Uh, first, it's education and outreach uh, to woodland owners, to the general public about the importance of forests and trees within our communities. Uh, the second thing that we do is uh, forest management. We promote the active management of our forests to be able to get our benefits, but also to sustain these forests into the future. Uh, and the third mission uh, of the Alliance's forest team is, is reforestation. So creating new forests where forests don't exist. At the Alliance, we have the Green Infrastructure Program area in which there are three tiers, uh, landscape restoration, workforce development, and stormwater management. Green infrastructure is essentially reducing stormwater uh, in our waterways by installing conservation landscaping practices that improve the water quality. So the Alliance was able to get funding from Chesapeake Bay Trust to install the practices you see behind me. And we wanted to include the community in these practices in the installation and maintenance and education of what was happening here. When we were working on the planning of this project, uh, we connected, we worked with our friends at the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, which was a um, magic, you know, partnership that brought the technical knowledge and expertise of the Alliance with our expertise and our passion to get Latinos involved in environmental action. Here at St. Catharines, we do a number of different practices, including rain barrels, cisterns, rain gardens, and a fair amount of conservation landscaping. St. Catharines project is unique because it provides us with a really successful blueprint for how to do this type of work in other properties with other communities. Uh, there are a number of elements that just really worked well, including the community engagement, the green team, and the fact that we worked with the community on the designs to create a practice that worked for our goals and for their goals. So the Stewardship and Engagement Program at the Alliance, I like to thank that's where so much of our on the ground work at the Alliance meets the people we're here to serve. So there's an estimated over 18 million people who live and work and play in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And when we talk about the on the ground implementation we have to do in order to meet these bigger water quality goals, it's really about engaging all 18 million to be able to get to that point. So our stewardship and engagement program focuses on different audiences, different priorities, interests, and several different angles to be able to engage those individuals where they're at. So the Chesapeake Watershed Forum is an annual conference the Alliance hosts over two days at the National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. We have over 400 conservation and restoration professionals come through the door at this event. And the whole weekend is spent uh, sharing stories, experiences, uh, lessons learned tied to our work, uh, restoring and conserving the broader Chesapeake Bay watershed. It's really this inspiring space energizing us to be ready for the next year of hard work as we restore the bay. Once I got to the forum, it was an amazing experience, to be completely honest. So I would say that the main thing that I walked away from, but I don't think I get from anywhere else, is um, building relationships and building connections with other like-minded individuals who um, have their own programs and who you can connect with if you want to engage with those programs or even create them in your own area. Um, it creates um, friendship but also opportunities. There is this forum magic, or what we call at the Alliance forum magic, which is just this kind of great feeling you get inside when you learn something new or you just hear about something from an angle you never even thought about it before. And that is what you take inside with you and carry forward when you leave. As you travel around the watershed and look at our impact, you'll notice the diverse communities that our work takes place in and the unique ways that we bring clean water to these communities. Each of our programs is a solution to a problem the Chesapeake Bay is facing right now. In order to achieve clean water and resilient landscapes for the 18 million people who live, work, and play in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, 
our solutions must face problems head on before they reach our waterways. This work must be done in collaboration with the communities that make up the Chesapeake Bay watershed. From Cooperstown, New York, down to Cape Henry, Virginia, we can all be part of the solution to bring cleaner water to the Chesapeake Bay. I hope you will join us for our forests, for our streams, for our future.